Uh, we are, as you can see, we are finishing up. We are it's still in the uh, in the uh, uh, chapter 11 here of the um, first book of Yisrael, making the connection with Yahweh. And again, this is entitled, Pride Keeps You From Humbling Yourself and Hearing the Voice of Yahweh, the Prophet He Has Appointed. Okay, again, this goes back to 7-5 uh, of 2003. All right, very relevant. It's, it's even more relevant now, I think, uh, in, especially given the time period that we're in. It's more important because it, it's, it's, it's always, it's, it's extremely important, especially given the time period that we're in and how little time is left. Okay, so very important, men, that we, that we, uh, we take these lessons to heart. And it's, uh, it's, you know, pride is a sneaky thing. You know, we can have it and have it within us and not even realize it until it's pointed out to us. Okay, so, uh, but the main subject, looking at the main subject of this sermon is to humble yourself under the authorities appointed by Yahweh. Yisrael and those he appoints to help, and don't let pride keep you out of the kingdom. You know, the scripture talks a lot about pride, and you would know that Satan, you know, Satan definitely, this is, her, you know, her pomp and her pride um, was her undoing. And, you know, we, we see that in these scriptures that have been, have been reinforced throughout this lesson. Uh, Isaiah chapter 14, 11 through 14, you know, it shows that, that me, myself, and I attitude. Uh, that she expressed, and she exalted and lifted herself up, uh, up against above everyone, you know, and everyone else was beneath her. And that's not the way of Yahweh. You know, we are to be servants to one another. We're to be servants to mankind, not above, you know, we're not to be elevated above anyone, but we are their servants. Uh, and this attitude has actually gone through and actually weakened the nations. And as we're going to get into this evening, remember the nations is referring to the people, okay? Remember your vocabulary words. And that her pomp and her pride is what's actually brought her down to the grave. And it's what brings, it, it, it's bringing mankind down because they won't humble themselves and listen to the one that Yahweh has appointed, the one that Yahweh has sent, the voice of Yahweh in these last days. Okay, and then we see in Deuteronomy 17, 9, again, you know, go to the priests and ask for their decisions and do as they instruct. You know, that's why we would go. We won't go to the priest, ask for their decision and say, eh, I don't think so. What was the point of going to ask? You know, we go ask, we ask, and we listen with the intent to obey. Uh, because the words that are given to us through our counselors, the word that comes forth from this house, is life. It is life. You're not going to find that anywhere else out in this world. And then we see in Exodus 19, 5 through 6, where it says, If you will truly obey my voice by keeping my covenant, then you shall be that special treasure above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. You remember that holy people. And remember the side note, that side note B. I, I can't emphasize enough, man. Look at those side notes. You know, those, those, you know, those that did this are those that believe without seeing, okay? And then the vocabulary words. We've covered most of these already. We're going to get into a few of them, uh, the remainder of them this evening. Remember that word poison. A poison is anything that will enter the body and start bringing it down or depleting it. Okay? And that can be something physical. It can be a thought. It can be a thought that gets in and grabs root and actually poisons the mind. Um, believe, the simple, the simple term for believe is simply to obey. Okay? Again, nations refers to the people. Now we're going to get into these last two this evening. This widow a widow is a woman whose husband has ceased to breathe or died physically. It doesn't mean that he's not going to be in the kingdom, but it means he has ceased to exist. He ceased to live on this earth. And then the proud. A proud is an insolent, a disregard, aloof, scornful manner toward others. That's what that word proud is. And we're going to get into that at great length this evening. <coughs> okay. A brief, just a real brief review of what we covered last week. Um, one of the main topics that we covered last week was a warning against going our own way. Okay, we we can't go our own way because remember uh, a, a man's mind plans his way, but Yahweh directs his paths. You know, and we can do what's right in our own eyes, but that way leads to death. Okay, so we can't trust in your own heart because, as, as the Scripture shows, that the, the the heart is deceitful above all else and it's desperately wicked. This whole world is following after their own heart, and look what has got them right now. Okay? And then the scriptures to take a look at there, 
uh, Psalm 30, uh, 37, verse 2, which tells us to depart. Remember, it says to depart from evil and do righteousness and live forever. And remember what that word depart means. It means to go away. It means to leave that behind. You know, it's just like, you know, it's just like, you know, being, being brought out of Egypt, being brought out of this world of sin. We leave that life behind. You know, when we came into Yahweh's house, we got baptized. That's what that symbolized is drowning that old man in that watery grave and coming up new, not practicing that old thing, those old things which caused us to be put in the grave to begin with. Okay? And then, again, you know, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, you know, goes right along with that, which, you know, where it talks about um, the ways, in, what, the ways in, which, in which we walked in times past. Times past. Not now, but in times past. According to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that God who is now at work in the children of disobedience, okay? And then, among whom we also once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, performing the desires of the flesh and of the mind. So you, you can see it's, it's not just the physical actions, but it's also the thoughts. And we were, we were um, you know, we're cautioned, you know, against that. Yahshua cautioned against that. Uh, you know, don't even think upon these things. And, you know, finally we got into how Great men in the scriptures had priests over them. You know, we don't think about, you know, Moshe having a priest over them. We don't think of, we don't think of the, you know, the, the holy men of old having, having the priests over them, but they were. Um, you know, the we, great men had the, in the scriptures had priests over them, and we're to humble ourselves to the priest, and Yahweh will use you. And remember the example that Pastor showed us of Moshe how Moshe conducted himself and how he got thrown out of Egypt, remember? And he was taken to a priest and he was taught and he was trained there for 35 years. And then after that 35 years, look at the attitude that Moshe had. After that 35 years, he was humbled, right? You know, he was humbled and said, Yahweh, this isn't for me. You know, this is, you know, you're going to use me to do this? I don't think I can. And Yahweh says, you're going to do what I tell you to do. Go do this. And that's exactly what he did, Okay. And, but he, he had that humble attitude. He developed that humble attitude to the point where, where, where Yahweh was able to actually use him. Okay? And remember in Matithia 18, 3 through 4, where Yahshua said that we have to be converted and become like little children. And he says, unless we do that, we're not going to enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. And, and those side notes... That G5 side note, remember, is, it means not lack in discretion, but that, but that they not seek to advance themselves to worldly honors. You know, leaving the, you know, don't take on the, the prideful life. Don't take on the, ooh, look what I accomplished. We're going to look at some of that here in a little bit. You know, it's not us that has accomplished anything. It is Yahweh, has, Yahweh has given us everything that we have. You know, if we have, you know, it doesn't matter what we have. You know, if you have a fancy car, if you have... You know, if you have a, a, a five-story house or a three-story house with 10 bedrooms and 15 bathrooms, you know, that isn't something that you got. That isn't something that you did yourself. It would be something that Yahweh gave you. Yahweh, all blessings, everything, all the blessings that we have come from Yahweh. Okay? Okay, so we're going to continue on here. We're going to continue on where we left off here. And I think we left off, it was about, oh boy, where did we leave off? Oh, okay, over here. On, the, on page 85, on the right-hand column down where it says Exodus chapter 19, verse 5, okay? If you're following along in Israel, it says it should be about verse 58, okay? That's about where we left off. And he says, here is where, and he's saying this, and I want you to mark this, mark this down. Highlight this. Here is where he is saying, this is what I need you to do in order to accomplish in the future throughout all eternity. Now, therefore, if you will truly obey my voice by keeping my covenant, by not thinking of yourselves too high and mighty. Okay, so highlight all that. Highlight that because we're going to see it again. He's saying, this is what I need you to do in order to accomplish in, or in the future throughout all eternity. So it's not going to be, it's not just something we do one time and then, okay, uh, we're, we're done. This is, you know, it's, we're done with it. It's, we did it one time and that's it. 
this is going to be a continual thing. It's, it's, it, it's, it's what we're going to be doing. Now, therefore, if you will truly obey my voice by keeping my covenant, by not thinking yourself too high and mighty, okay, and that Yahweh is leading and guiding your every move like Yahweh showed me this uh, out of my own effort. See, you see that pride, how pastor's showing here how that pride can creep in there? Yahweh showed me this out of my own efforts. Yahweh is working so closely with me because I'm so darn righteous. I'm above Yahweh and even in my righteousness. No wonder he wants me to help in this work in these last days. I'm here to teach you, Yisrael. How arrogant of a thought is that? But yet people come in with that thought. They think they're going to come in and teach the one that Yahweh appointed? The, the voice of Yahweh in these last days? Isn't going to take place, guys. It won't take place. Okay? So, keep that in mind and take a look at the overhead here. As we see here in Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 4 through 5. And look at this. Look at this warning here. It says, but do not even think in your heart. After Yahweh your father has thrust them out from in front of you and say to yourself, because of my own righteousness, Yahweh has brought me in to possess this land. He says, no. It was because of the wickedness of these same nations that Yahweh is driving them out from in front of you this day. It wasn't you. It's because of the wickedness of the nations. Okay? And it says, it's not because of your righteousness or your uprightness and integrity of your heart that you are going to take possession of their lands. No. When they were called, they weren't upright. They had no righteousness. They, weren't, they didn't have any integrity. Just like we didn't. We, what righteousness did we have? What uprightness and what integrity did we have when we got called to Yahweh's house? We didn't know what those things were until Yahweh brought us here. And we humbled ourselves in front of the one that Yahweh has sent. And that's where we learn these things. And he says that you're going to take possession of their land, but it's because of the wickedness of these nations Yahweh your father will drive them out in front of you and so that he may perform the word which Yahweh vowed on oath to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that's why he's doing this, to fulfill and to vow, you know, to fulfill the vow that he made on oath. You know, no doubt, men, pastor said that Yahweh called each and every one of us here. Anybody have any doubt about that? Praise Yahweh. There shouldn't be a single doubt in this room that Yahweh didn't bring us here. Okay, but you know Yahweh is sees something within us and sees the potential within us, and that's why He called us. You know, pastors told us this. You know, He's brought us here so we can develop that, and so that we can nurture it, and so we can allow that to grow, and so that it can be used not for our benefit but for the benefit of the kingdom of Yahweh. That's why we're here, and this is the this is the importance of us. This is the importance of us being here for for what it is that we're you know what we have been called here to do. Okay, next page, page top of page eighty six. Now, therefore, if you will truly obey my voice, his voice, who was his voice at that time? Did you get that? If you will truly obey my voice and keep my covenant, then. See, it's an if-then. These conditions have to be met. If you will truly obey my voice by keeping my covenant, and then you shall be that special treasure. Only then will you be the special treasure to me above all people, and you will be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, a holy nation filled with spirit holy. That's our, that's our goal. That is our goal, to, to take the spirit holy, to allow the spirit holy to overshadow us. You know, and a holy nation, and a holy nation filled with spirit holy. That word nation is referring to the people. Highlight that. Nation. Nation is referring to the people. That's one of our vocabulary words. The number of people, not like a cut out place, like the one you would see in Africa. Okay. This is one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention. One of the newsmen last week asked, why are we going into Liberia? The answer was, this is coming forth from this administration, and they have this dictator, and these people are suffering. Everybody knows that there was a strong, that, that there was a strong person who established power over Liberia, and it became a province of Africa. 
we have these same setups all over the world. So it's not just there, it was not just there in Liberia, but it's all over. We have these same setups all over the world, like in Iraq, Saddam Hussein, the land was torn with war, it was full of thefts and killings of all kind. He went in and he had to use force because he didn't know anything else but force. He used force to beat down the people and, and to beat the people down and to establish a government and to keep it under control. He did this until he got kicked out. And of course, this is, you know, this was talking about, uh, I believe it was the president of uh, Liberia, I think it was Charles Taylor, I think, from like August, August, the 8th Roman month of 97 to 8th Roman month of 2003. And, um, he, re, he, he wound up actually resigning because he was indicted by the, um, uh, by, for crimes against humanity uh, against the special court uh, for Sierra Leone. It was something, something like that. But he was, basically he was forced out. You know, he, he, he was forced out. He was kicked out. And then in verse 61, or the next paragraph down, the newsman said, well, we're going to invade every one of these countries that have this same setup. I said, well, we're going to, we're going to the set, same setup. That is to the administration. But it could be that somebody might come along, a leader, and say, we've got the power to do this now. We've got the power to do this now, so let's take it. It might be, according, you know, it might be. According to prophecy, it will be. Okay? And this next one here, we're continuing in Exodus 19.6. It says, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. And this is not like this little cut off place or marked out place saying that this is your nation, this is your nation. Now highlight that. Highlight that. This is your nation. This is your nation. Okay? It is a makeup of people who are to inherit the entire universe, not just the earth or part of the earth. Highlight this. A nation or people who will rule as Yahweh, that's what it means. So that's what that means. You know, when it's speaking of a nation, it's referring to the people. Okay? And this holy nation is going to be a nation or people who will rule as Yahweh. That's what the name Yisrael means, right? He who rules as Yahweh. And this is what we are learning. This is what we're learning here. Okay, verse 63. Next, next, next verse down it says, And Moshe came, and he summoned the elders of the people, and set before them, uh, and set before them all the works, all the works, all the words of the law of Yahweh. Okay? So, you know, this nation, going, going right back up to this nation, a nation or people who will rule as Yahweh, and that's what that means. Okay? If you want to cross-reference that, you can cross-reference that with, with 1 Kepha chapter 2 and verse 9 if you want to cross-reference it. Okay? You can cross-reference that. And that 1 Kepha chapter 2 verse 9 tells us, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. A peculiar people that would show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay? And when you look at that side note again, that side note D, it's talking about the gathering of those called out. Okay? So this is, you know, speaking of, you know, especially at this time period, you know, we are going to be a chosen generation, this royal priesthood and this holy nation. We're being called out, set apart for a holy work if we qualify. In order to qualify, it, that, that obedience is what's going to have to be followed. We're going to have to, the only way that we can actually qualify is to prove our obedience. Okay? Okay, in verse 63 it says, And Moshe came and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words of the law of Yahweh. Moshe, notice this, now Moshe was the voice of Yahweh that they were hearing. Okay? Moshe was the voice of Yahweh that the people were hearing. And all of the people answered together and said, all that Yahweh has spoken, we will do. As long as our head is watching every move we make. Uh, um, let me back up and let me, let, me, let me look at that again here. All right. And all of the people answered together and said, all that Yahweh has spoken, we will do. Dot, dot, dot. The condition was, as long as our head is with us and watching every move we make. Okay. 
you know, as long as I'm around, as long as somebody's around that can tattle on me or that can, you know, that can report back somewhere something I shouldn't be doing, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do what they say. But when I'm in secret, when I'm away and nobody's there, nobody's watching, I can go ahead and do what I want to and get away with it. There is no way, man, that we're going to get away with sin in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Okay? We've got to remember the complexity of the human body, of how Yahweh created the human body, make it us, made us up, make, and we're made up of these microbes. Okay? And we've got this little bone, remember, in the back, the back of our skull, you know, that records everything. And our thoughts and our actions, all of that is being recorded back there. And when resurrection time comes, even if we're, even, a, you know, when, when, when that time comes, you know, that is the record. That, 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 that is a perfect record of our actions. Were they righteous? Were they evil? What? You know, so that is the testimony. That being, you know, that's, that's part of the testimony that's being written. It's being written right into, into our very DNA, right into our, into our very bodies themselves. You know, Yahweh created it that way. You know, that's why there's nothing secret, nothing hidden. You know, we've got to, you know, that, that is something else we've, we've got to remember. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing when you really think about the, the complexity of the human body and how, and how Yahweh has put that together. You know, we have no idea. Science has no idea. They have little bits and pieces, but they buy, they, they, that's all they have is little bits and pieces. And even some of the information they have you know, is incorrect. It's speculation. Okay. Verse 65, it says, but many of them didn't. Many of them were taught. There was a huge work, Now highlight this here. There was a huge work going on right there at that time, and Yethro was the one who set it in order. If you remember what was taking place there, it was the same thing that is going on here at this time with the presses, with the equipment, and everyone assigned offices and organizations. Now highlight that because we're going to see that again. Okay? And there was a huge work going on right here. And at that time, and Yethro was the one who set it in order, it was the same thing that is going on here at this time with the presses, with the equipment. It was the work. This is the work that's going on. Everyone assigned offices and organizations. That is the same thing that is going on in your body too. Think about that. Look what, look what pastor sees in the scriptures concerning what's going on within our bodies. It's the same thing going on in your body. When you mess up that organization by putting or letting that poison come into this office or into that office, then you have strife in revolutions. Okay? Remember that poison, you know, putting the unclean food into our, into our, into our bodies. You know, and what that does, go back to the, you know, go back to that gateway that we, that we learned about, the zonulin and zot. You know, go back to that and the importance of that. You know, and how that goes to protect that blood-brain barrier. You know, and it, it's a gateway that allows stuff through or doesn't allow stuff through. And if we trick it by eating something unclean and it allows it to go through, look at the damage that's going to cause. You know, and if we don't, if we can't quite grasp that, just look out in the world and you can see the, you can see the confusion that's out in the world. You can see the bitterness, you can see the hatred. Look, I mean, it's, I don't think there's a man in here that wants to go back out into that. You've got people that are screaming, that are wanting to come out of that, but they don't know how. They're going to know how. And they're going to need people to teach them what to do. And men, that's, our, that's going to be our position to be able to do that. That's how Yahweh is going to use us. But we have to qualify to be able to do that. Okay? So, but we've got to guard our mind. We have to guard our minds with all diligence. You know, by letting that poison, if we allow it to come in, it can be, even be the thoughts. Remember the thoughts, how those thoughts can actually trigger physiological responses. You know, we've got to watch that. So the best thing to do, pastor says, is to keep everything on a keel with Yahweh's laws in the different organizations. You know, don't cause, you know, don't do anything to cause this strife and these revolutions to rise up within our bodies or within our minds. So Moshe was trying to run, run it all himself here. 
He was not. He was not the only. He was not only doing the writing. He was doing the teaching, the judging, the printing, the running, the pre printing press, making copies. He was doing everything. And Yethro said, "You can't put. You can't do this. You have to have some help. You have to have some help. You can't do this all. You you, you can't do it all." And then he said, now "Highlight this. Put this man over this department, and that woman over that department." and this man here and that man here, and make sure that they're trustworthy and will keep this body moving in the right direction. Okay, so highlight that, because that's what Yahweh is doing. You know, he's, he's testing us, and we're qualifying for a position in the kingdom based on what it is that we're doing now. We're, 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 we're training, and we might not realize what position we are training for, but we're training for a position. And that when that position is offered, it's going to be the perfect fit. It's going to be the, exactly the right place, right where we need to be. But highlight that again. Put this man over that, this department and that woman over that department and this man here and that man here and make sure that they're trustworthy. Okay? It's not just put them there, but make sure they can be trusted. Because there's much responsibility that goes in with being put in a position like that. Make sure they're trustworthy and, they'll, and, and, and we'll keep this body moving in the right direction. All right, some cross-references here we can take a look at. If you want to take a look and you write these down, uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter 18, verses 14 through 24 is one cross-reference there. And then the other one is Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 12 through 16, Okay. So those are some cross-references for, for this particular scripture of what Pastor is, is talking about right here. And those are, talking, and those are simply talking about Moshe being instructed to appoint those righteous helpers and to delegate those responsibilities instead of trying to do everything himself. You know, it's just, it's just you know, it's, it's, too, you know it, it's too much for one person to do. And that's why Moshe was instructed to do that very thing. Okay, from that, brethren, we have the book of Yahweh. It's a tremendous work and accomplishment for those people at that time. And it all occurred from the days of Moshe up until the last prophet was gone, who was Yachanan. After that, the disciples, will, the disciples put in their parts, which are another organized effort on their part, not so much as this writing of the first book, but the second one was certainly a great accomplishment. Highlight this next sentence. Moshe was the voice of Yahweh. Okay? Moshe was the voice of Yahweh. It's just like Israel, our pastor, is the voice of Yahweh today. Let's turn over to the Savior's words and let's get back there and remember what we're going to see a while ago about is what we are seeing a while ago about his authority. The house of Yahweh was established under Abel, then Noah, and then Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Samuel. These men would not be great in the world's eyes. Now think about that. These men would not be great in the world's eyes. They would be poor peasants who were striving to get a people ready for the ark, ready from passing into the flood, or ready from passing into a time where their utilities are going to be shut off, and they're going to be, and, and they're going to be griping, Raising Cain and murmuring, as as Exodus said, okay. Now think about that. These men would not be great in the world's eyes. But there would be poor peasants who were striving to get a people ready for the ark. You know. By the way, pastor pastor shows here. Um, Actually, let's take a look over here. Let's look at uh, Exodus. Let's look at Exodus fourteen twelve. We'll cross reference that right there. Exodus fourteen twelve says, "Did we not say to you in Egypt to leave us alone? Didn't he say to do that? Didn't did, uh, didn't they say? Did we not say to you in Egypt, leave us alone and let us serve the Egyptians?" It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in this wilderness. 
Okay, see, this is all about the murmuring and the griping and complaining that they were doing. And look at that side note, verse 6, or, or G6 there. It says, those who are impatient and will not wait on Yahweh are unable to wait for Yahweh to act in his appointed time. Okay, so those who are impatient and will not wait on Yahweh are unable to wait for Yahweh to act in his appointed time. And men, that's one of the that's one of the things that we that that can be difficult for us to 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 deal with at times. You know, is to wait for Yahweh for things to take place in Yahweh's time. You know, but we have to because it's Yahweh's plan. We're not going to hurry it along. Yahweh's plan is perfect. The timing of events, the timing of events for our lives, the things that need to be accomplished in our lives, it's perfect. So why would we want to try to push things along and hurry things along? You know? Um, I mean, I don't know how many times I've heard, you know, I've, I've heard people in the past you know, say, well, if nuclear war doesn't start within the next year, I'm out of here. Well, you know what? That's exactly what Yahweh wants to see. Are we going to be patient? Are we going to trust in him? You know, and that's what we're going to do. We are, that's what he's testing to see. Are we going to be impatient? Are we going to be patient? Are we going to wait on Yahweh to act in his appointed time? Because everything that Yahweh does and says is going to come to pass. Absolutely. And we've seen that time and time again. Okay, uh, back down to verse 70 here. It says, by the way, I don't want to distract you from what I've said thus far, but I want you to be more wise and suitable uh, if you want water or hot water during this time period to channel some of that money toward a solar pump if you don't have one now, isn't it? Look at the timing here. Look at the timing. What did Pastor say about water here a couple, three weeks ago? Right? He always said we need to start thinking about it. Look what he's telling us again. Look, I mean, again, look how, you know, this was written back in what, 2003, did we say? Yep, 2003. We need to be thinking about water. You know, and he's talking about solar pumps here. He says they're not very expensive. We can get them installed. You know, they're solar water heaters too. And, and you know, and he talks about, you know, we already, you know, we've hooked them up and we've tried them. You know, the solar water heater, you know, they would, you know, he talks about supplying the, the sanctuary, about supplying the men's and women's showers. Um, you know, and he gives an estimated cost here um, uh, of, of that one uh, for the, that combined. But he says, you know, that, that uh, but um, uh, he shows down here that with, uh, let me see here. He says that one, he shows that that one cost about $4,500 and it was probably $5,000 together with everything. And you look at how much that was to, and what it was going to supply. But he says it should be much more affordable for smaller units. But, and, and he's talking about, you know, when the electricity goes down, we need something to keep the water pumping. You know, be it a hand pump or be it a solar pump or whatever, but we need to be thinking about these things. And then he talks about the water again. You know, this is purified water. It's the best science. It's the best. The best the science world says that there is. And it's right under our feet. And here, uh, here with what Yahweh has supplied. Remember, it's that clay. Remember that filtering system that, was, that, that, is, that is all around us. It's that clay. And, you know, he shows us. He says we have that solar. That, uh, that we have the solar that comes from, Yah from Yahweh himself pumping his water. And he says, you can get the smaller units for your own dwelling, and we can show you here how to get them. We can show you here how to get them and how to set them up. And he says, you can probably do it yourself. And he says, but it amazed me how simple it was. Um, he said, he wasn't doing it, but he could easily instruct them how to do it and where to put it. He says, he did it with one finger, right? just, like, just like Moshe was instructed. You, know? you, get the men, you get men that are trustworthy, and you point them in these certain positions. And you give them direction, and then they follow those directions. He says, you take this and put it there, and it was done. Just point and say the word. He says, should I be proud of myself for being able to do this? No, I'm going to show you what tr the true accomplishment is here in just a little bit. Okay. And Yachanan 539, he says, search the scriptures. Now, we're talking here about authority. 
And we're, 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 we're actually speaking of authority here. It says, Yahweh gave Abel, the first righteous priest, the authority to be a priest. Okay, highlight that. Yahweh gave Abel, the first righteous priest, the authority to be the priest. He said, you are a priest unto me. He accepted his sacrifices he put in order to prepare a work before the flood. Abel did a great work. A great accomplishment on his part, along with all the others who worked with him at that time, and they're still spoken of today, and that will be forever. He says, if you remember, it was Abel who I saw, and I think it was the very first dream that I had in Yahweh Shema. I saw Abel at that time. Everybody remember that dream that Pastor had? Okay. Everybody remember that? Um, I want to read that. I want to read that to you here. It's from the second book of Yisrael, chapter 30. And it actually covers uh, uh, verses 39 to 43 in the Yisrael Says program. Now, what I would like you to do is, and there's a reason I'm just going to read it, because I didn't want the distraction of having it up on the screen. But I kind of just want you to sit back and just imagine and try to visualize what pastor was seeing here. Okay, because this is very real, men. This is what is waiting for those who overcome pride, who overcome the ways of this world. This is what past this is this is what Yahweh showed pastor through a dream of what to expect. Okay? So if you want to, you can kind of kind of sit and relax. Close your eyes if you want to, and just imagine, and just think about this, and see if what Pastor presents here is worth giving up this damnable pride and everything else that is dangled in front of us in this world, okay? Pastor starts here in verse 39. He says, I went back to sleep, and I had another dream right after that one. He says, I could never have imagined I could never imagine any such thing I saw in that dream. I have never seen it in paintings, read about it in books, seen it in movies, or anything. I was in Yahweh Shema, and I was at the wedding supper. And I could hear everyone talking like I can see everyone sitting here in this sanctuary now. There were a number of people, and I could hear their individual voices talking to me, never missing a thing. The house of Yahweh was seated at Yahshua's right hand, and there was a long, long table. I had my left hand to Yahshua, and I was facing the table, which had every kind of food that you can think of. I was facing it, and I was looking at everyone in the house of Yahweh who was with me, behind me, but with me. And I could see every individual. I had eyes in all directions. I mean, not all, I only had two eyes but I could see in all directions. In my dream, I said, this is what Yekatsky meant. And he says, I still don't understand it, but I'm getting there. The far end of the table looked like it was miles away, but you could, clear, but you could clearly, you could see it clearly. You could see everything because of the light particles that were, that were, coming, that were, that were, that were coming from the eyes that Yahweh gave us. Although these things were miles away, I could see every face to my right-hand side. It was like my vision was coming out and around, seeing every face. And I asked, who is that at the far end of the table? And a voice said, you know. And I said, that's Abel, isn't it? And I was rejoicing. In front, across the table, there were multitudes as the sands of the sea, And they didn't go too far, and it wasn't the distance that would cut them off like it would now. We were sitting above the earth, but we were like in a story of that building. I don't know if it was the top story or what, but you could see the earth. You could also look up, and you could see through this building. Even though we were inside a room, we could see through it, and we could see all the planets individually. There was one huge planet that was passing by us. At this time, there was one huge planet that was passing by us at this time, and it looked like like you could just reach out and touch it. 
Now, I've never had an imagination like this in my life. I've never seen this at any other time or imagined it or read about it in comic books or anything like what went on in that dream the night before last. And I praise Yahweh for it. That was out of the second book of Yisrael, chapter 30. And it's on page 272. If you want to go back and you, if you want to read that, if you want to study, you know, and, and, and study that. But, you know, it brings back the, the scripture that says, you know, I hasn't seen nor ear heard the wonderful things that Yahweh has in store for those who love him and keep his laws. You know, and that's what Yahweh asks of each and every one of us is to overcome and to be obedient. But man, this, <laughs> that is such a beautiful picture of what, of just a little bit of, of, of what's waiting. And people want to turn and they want to go back out in this filthiness out here in the world. You know, it's crazy. But going back to the book here, going back to the book here in Yachanan chapter 7 and verse 39, pastor says, search the scriptures. Now we're talking about authority, and I think we just, I think I already read this, um, but we'll, I'll go ahead and read it again. But we're actually speaking of authority and highlight, again, highlight if you haven't, Yahweh gave Abel, the first righteous priest, the authority to be the priest. And yeah, we, we, already, read, we already read that, read down where this, this where pastor was in that dream and we just saw where he saw Abel verse 74 down here uh, about the middle of the page on the left hand column it says search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they that testify of me the world says that they obey the scriptures but search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life if they examine if they truly examine those scriptures then they're going to see that what they're being taught is far from what's written in those scriptures. But these are they that testify of me. How did they testify of him? Verse 46, For had you believed Moshe, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Moshe was the voice of Yahweh. Verse 37, And the Father himself who has sent me testifies on my behalf. How? How does he testify on his behalf? Through his voice. Moshe, because Moshe wrote of me, that Yahshua, that is what Yahshua was saying. For where does he get his authority? From Moshe. Moshe was the voice of Yahweh who actually gave Yahshua authority. Remember, Moshe spoke of the prophecies. Moshe spoke of the prophecies of Yahshua. Yahshua fulfilled those prophecies. Fulfilled prophecy proves all things. Who is the voice of Yahweh in these last days? Praise Yahweh. Why? Where does he get his authority? From the praise Yahweh, from those from those from those same inspired scriptures. Every single prophecy about pastor has been fulfilled. There's no greater authority, there is no certificate that comes from any worldly institute of higher learning, you know, that is gonna equal they can they, they can't hold a candle to it. They cannot hold a handle to well, yeah, but you got your degree, but I, but pastor was spoken of in prophecy. His authority comes from Yahweh. You don't get any higher authority than that, man. It just you just don't. Okay? Highlight this next paragraph here, verse 76. That is the way you get authority. Either it is through an established work, a priesthood, or it's through a prophecy that prophesied of a person like Yachanan. Highlight that. It's important for us to understand that. It's important for us to read that and, and, and to realize that. Okay? All right. It says, The harlots, the publicans, and the tax collectors actually saw this prophecy, and when they saw Yachanan, they knew he was a servant of Yahweh. They knew it. According to the scriptures, the people in that region all thought of Yachanan as a prophet. It was Herod who did not want to obey the voice of that prophet and his queen who had Yachanan killed. Okay, so some cross-references for that particular section there. Some cross-references for that section there that we're looking at. Uh, you can cross-reference uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 29. 
You can cross-reference Yachanan Mark 6.20. And you can also cross-reference Yachanan Mark chapter 6, verses 18 through 19. And then again, 21 to 28. So you can, you can, that section there, those cross-references will all cover these areas here. Okay? But it was Herod who did not want to obey the voice of that prophet and his queen who had Yachanan killed. They were even afraid of the people at that time because they knew Yachanan was a prophet of Yahweh. And it is through that established work that the prophets or priests, uh, it is through that established work that prophets, priests, or, or, or authority are given. Matthew 21:28. here you see by what authority? He says they are asking him in verse 23, by what authority are you doing these things? You, uh, uh, by, what authorities, by what authority are you doing these things? You are doing? We do not see your name written in these books anywhere. They should have looked in the books of Moshe and they would have found his name. Yahweh spoke of him. And you can cross-reference Amosia chapter 3 verse 7. Remember, that shows that Yahweh will have no work other than that which is prophesied in advance by his servants, the prophets. Okay, in cross-reference, Amosia 3, 7. The bottom of that left-hand column there, it says, If you had believed it, then you would have believed and had repented and converted. You saw that he was prophesied of, and you would have believed unto repentance. Okay? Remember that? Believe means to do what? Praise Yahweh, obey. Remember, that's one, of our, that's one of our vocabulary words. Okay? All right. Top of the right-hand column over here on page 87. Now, remember this de remember the definition... De ah, back up. Now, remember this definition of proud. Okay? Proud, one of our vocabulary words. Okay? Let me read it again to you. Okay? So, pastor's going to explain to us Again, this definition of proud. She has an insolent disregard for her servant's feelings. Okay, and remember, remember we kind of looked up that word insolent. And what does that word insolent mean? Look at, the, look at the overhead real quick. That top definition there, insolent, means insultingly contemptuous. That is feeling or expressing a deep hatred or disapproval in speech or in conduct. Okay, and it can be even in thought because it shows that feeling or it's either a feeling of deep hatred. And look at this. It's hatred. The bottom line is it's hatred. It's hatred or disapproval in speech or in conduct. So it's, it's that insulting, that's insulting, contemptuous feeling. Okay? That is one way of being proud. She is so high and mighty, she only cares for herself. You know, she doesn't care about anybody else. She is the most important person or he or she, however it is, you know, however you want to look at it, because this fits everybody, uh, men, and women, men and women alike. Um, she is so high and mighty, she only cares for herself. Overbearing implies an extreme domineering insolence like an overbearing supervisor. You heard Pastor talk about squashing people under their thumb. It's not how we're supposed to be supervised, is it? Right? We lead. We don't squash with a thumb, but we lead. We shouldn't be overbearing. We lead by instruction. Okay? Or one who will just not accept a word from anyone, not even a prophet. As stresses and aloof, scornful manner toward others. Okay, so go back and go back. So this word proud, you want to highlight an insolent disregard. Highlight that because that's one of the vocabulary words. Insolent disregard. Okay, and then this next part here, aloof, scornful manner toward others. Okay, that's, you want to highlight those because that's, those are those definitions again. And remember that word aloof, you know, because I had to kind of, I had to look that one up because it's, I just wasn't, wasn't familiar with it. But aloof means a removed or distant, either physically or emotionally, you know, so you can, you can be removed or distant. By thinking of yourself, oh, I'm more high and mighty than anybody else. You can be working with somebody and say, oh, boy, I'm above this individual over here. You know, and kind of look down upon that individual. And you can do that in your mind. 
That's part of, that's part of pride. We can't look at one another, men. We cannot look at one another in this way. Absolutely not. It will keep us from inheriting the promises that Yahweh wants to give us. We've got to overcome that. But it's aloof. It's removed or distant, either physically or emotionally. It means antisocial. It means detached. It means standoffish. Remember the separatist. Oh, don't come near me. I'm holier than you. You know, and you, can, you can kind of get the snobbish, the person that holds their nose in the air. You know, they wouldn't want to do that in the rain. They might drown. You know, but it's a detached, standoffish. It means unconcerned. That means a lack of sensitivity or regard for others' needs or troubles. You know, just, just, not, just not caring. Just, it, 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 it's not caring. Could you imagine if, if Yahweh didn't care, you know, didn't care about our troubles or didn't care about the things that we were going through? Yeah, he cares for us very deeply. He loves each and every one of us. And he wants us in his kingdom. But that, stre- that stresses an aloof or scornful manner toward others. If you watch closely and long enough, you will see it. Snobbish implies an even stronger and more overt feelings of scorn for that which is disregarded as beneath him or her. And that's the definition. You know, and we, we've got to watch that because it's, it's easy to see these things in actions. You know, and if a person has it in their mind, it'll come out in their actions. You'll see it in their actions. You know, so we, again, you know, men, we, you know, we've, we've got to watch. We've got to be careful what goes on in our heads, okay? Verse 80 here. Uh, let's go to the book of Eob, and we'll, and we'll not be able to cover all of this, but I want you to get it, just a little bit of this. And I think the first sermon I heard on this was back in 1951, and I said, well, that's not what, this father, what the Father is showing here. Eob chapter 40, verse 1, it says, this is where Yahweh answered Eob. Now remember, Eob was rich. He had barns, servants, and storage, everything you could possibly think of, even up to an army of men, women, and slaves. He was a very powerful man. And all of this was taken away from him, and Eob was just stuck with a wife, who did not want to serve Yahweh and wanted him to leave so she could do her own thing. Somebody said something that makes me think that people are just not listening, he says here. Now highlight this next part here. A widow is when her husband has ceased to breathe. Okay, remember, definition, vocabulary word, vocabulary word, widow. A widow is when her husband has ceased to breathe. Notice this next part here that Pastor tells us. And won't be pronounced dead or alive until the coming judgments. Okay? Now think about that. A widow won't be, a a widow is when her husband has ceased to breathe, and that husband will not be pronounced dead or alive until the coming judgments. Somebody said they thought it was in this person's mind that she was single. Okay, look at the look at the 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 foolish thinking here. Somebody said they thought it was in this person's mind that she was single, and I said, single? She has a baptized husband, and they thought this was because the man had stopped breathing and was now asleep. It is like if Abraham had died before Sarah, and here Sarah is open for somebody else to come to. Could you imagine how filthy that would be for someone to take Abraham's wife? You know, it would be also filthy for you to do the same to a widow whose husband is dead. You know, you think, I mean, think about that. You know, we've got to keep that in mind, too. All right, now going back to Eob chapter 40, verse 1, it says, Now hear Eob now, and Yahweh is answering Eob, and he says, Now this is like Yachanan telling Herod that he had no right to take this man's wife. Will one who contends with Yahweh correct him? Well, well, one who contends with Yahweh, correct him. He who rebukes Yahweh, let him answer this. Eob was trying to make up his own mind in thinking. Now, look at this. Eob was think was trying to make up in his own mind that he was think in in thinking that he was righteous and accomplished so much, and was holding on to his integrity as if, as if it was something. He was, in fact, proud of his accomplishments. Remember what we read back toward the beginning of class or toward the beginning back over here about taking those 
accomplishments. It was back in like verse 32 to 35, you know, to forget about our past accomplishments and to do what? To focus on what? You need to focus on being humble. That's the key. You know, to focus. That's where our energies on should be, not on trying to elevate and lift ourselves up, but focus on being that humble, submissive person, just like Yahshua was, like our pastor is. You know, we've got that perfect example that's set right before us. But he was, in fact, proud of his accomplishments. And pastor says, I know I'm over time. If you will remember right there where we left off, we will take up with one of the greatest teachings and examples there when I come back and speak again that Yahweh gave throughout the whole book of Yahweh. Yahweh bless you, and I will turn the surfaces back over to the song leader. Now, notice this little last part here, what he says. McCall is not clapping now. Okay, so remember he opened up with who McCall was, remember? You know, yeah, she, you know, she wasn't, you know, and he ends with, there with McCall is not clapping now. Okay. Man, that pretty much brings us to the end of, the end of this chapter. You know what time it is? What time is it? It's what time? Yes. There it is. It's test time. Okay. Just some reminders, okay? It's time for a test. And it says, remember. You know, remember, it's an open book test. But try to challenge yourself by not using the book if at all possible. You know, it really is, you know, these questions and stuff, you know, if we've gone through, if you go through and we rehearse, go through and rehearse these things. You know, especially the, you know, the highlighted, the highlighted parts here, you know, those are, you know, those are extremely important pieces out of those sections okay but get you know we need to look and and just and, and try to remember what it is that pastor's trying to get across to us here okay and the best way to do that is to try not to use the book if at all possible but if we need to we need to you know it's you know the you know it's are we going to get a hundred percent all the time no there's going to be some things but that shows us where we need to go back and what what we need to rehearse Okay, so these tests can definitely be used, or should definitely be used as a teaching tool, okay, to help us show where, okay, I need a little bit more work in this area. So, you know, so remember, it's try to challenge yourself by not looking at the book, okay? You can take the test home, of course, and, and bring, it back to bring it back with you to the next class, okay? Just bring it back, and we'll get the, we'll get the test, and we get them graded as soon as, you know, as, soon as we can, um, if you live outside of the Abilene area and would like to take the test, okay, make sure for you out there in, in social media land that are watching, make sure that you viewed or listened to all of the parts of the class covering the entire chapter so you know what's been covered. Okay? And you can look at them at Yahweh.com or you can go to Facebook. Facebook is an awesome, it's an awesome tool to go back and to find these, these classes. Okay? And then you can request a test. Uh, one will be emailed to you. Uh, but you know, be sure you answer the test and email it back, okay? Uh, use the um, MBYCC as the subject of your email. We get a lot of email in, and this helps identify that this is for the certification course, okay? And you want to make sure it goes to the house of Yahweh, Ab uh, Abilene at gmail.com. And notice the spelling of Abilene. It's A-B-E-L-I-N, not Abilene, okay? Notice that spelling, okay? And that will make sure that it gets to us, all right? So, it's, uh, men, it's been, a, been a tremendous honor to be able to be with you over the past three weeks here, and I look forward to the next class that I do get to spend with you. So with that, Yahweh be with you. Yahweh bless you. Yahweh protect you and keep you safe throughout this work week.